um, morning. Um, I suppose after after last night, is, is this where you're on your con? What what did, what did you say after after the result? Uh, clearly, it was a disappointing result. I think um, you know we, we were a bit stunned last night. I think I think all day um, in those sort of games, the weather does play a little bit of a trick with your minds. And I think on reflection, we were probably a little bit tentative as a group. I think we're tentative with the ball in the power play, and I thought Ireland played really well. Uh, and I, I was really pleased with our back end. I thought we pegged them back to bowl them out for that score. It was, it was a good result in the first half. But then we lost wickets early and, um, yeah, we, we played behind the game most of the game. And, um, yeah, with the benefit of hindsight, we probably all would have liked to have got in front of DLS a little bit earlier. But it, it wasn't to be. I think that the intent was there. We just didn't hit the ball very well and, and Ireland bowled well to the conditions. Uh, with such a short turnaround, um, will, will there be changes or anything, or, or, or what can you say to kind of you know pick, pick the guys up? Not really. I, I don't think there'd be any changes. I think those games um, you've got to park pretty quickly. I think it was a pretty um, sombre dressing room last night. Uh, ben Stokes spoke really well about we haven't got the opportunity to dwell for too long. We're playing a, a big match uh, tomorrow. Um, and you know we've just got to get up and about. I think we've got you know we've got a session in here today. But for us, it's about a, just a different mindset now. Like we we don't have the luxury now of, of losing another game. We, we're playing against the hosts, the defending champions. Um, so there's there's no need for us as a as a coaching group to motivate the group. I think they they'll um, they'll take stock, they'll play well, and come out firing in the next game. Are you uh, mindful of, of rain again tomorrow? And um, if so, what I suppose would you would you do things differently if, if there were rain again? Uh, well, yeah, you can't really. We can't control that. Um, we couldn't control it last night, and we won't in the next game. We've, you've, what we've got to do is stay in the moment. We've said that. You know, I think we've had a really good month of cricket. We've had a bad day yesterday. Um, that happens. In T20 is a very fickle game. Um, you know, we're probably one shot away from winning that game, which probably. Wouldn't have been a fair result, to be honest. I thought Ireland uh, were the better team yesterday. Um, but we were one shot away from probably clawing an unlikely victory. Um, and that being said, I think with the batting depth that we had, had the game gone the distance, I think we would have been a good chance of winning as well. Uh, but that's the nature of the beast. We, we, it's worked for us a little bit over the last month. We've, we've got over the line in some other games. Um, we can't dwell. You, you just can't dwell on T20 results. Um, Matt, you said uh, pr probably n no changes um, to the team, but do you think there might be some room for manoeuvre in terms of the way you shuffle your cards? Um, Joss alluded to the fact that you didn't get Liam and Murray into the game early enough, and obviously the, the guys batting above maybe chewed up a few too many balls, not getting ahead of the DLS. Might there be need for a, a, a change there? Yeah, there always is, and we have those conversations all the time on the bench. And um, yeah, so, sometimes it's like sliding doors moments. You, uh, as captains and coaches, you, th you think of a lot of things, and you got to pull the trigger. And um, I, I thought the intent was there yesterday. I think it was clearly, um, yeah, some tricky conditions. I think had they been patting the ball back, it would have been a bit different. But there was it was genuine intent, and uh, unfortunately, they just couldn't get their hands on it. And when you see someone like Moen come out, who's a highly skilled player, and just whack it like that, yeah, there's some things that we would have done differently, definitely. And, and do you get a sense that um, under the pressure of a, a World Cup that maybe one or two players are finding life a bit more difficult? I'm thinking maybe of, of Harry, who has looked absolutely remarkable you know, up until the tournament and in two games, maybe decision-making not quite as, as strong as it had been. Uh, not really. I, I actually, uh, I, I thought he was going to win the game for us last night. I've got real faith in Harry's cricket brain. I think he's he's a very mature young man. Um, he took on the big boundary yesterday, which I think a lot of even experienced players have tried here and got it wrong. And I think he'll be a better player for that experience. I think what we did learn last night is in those sort of conditions, maybe twos are more of an option. Uh, there are big boundaries to clear, particularly square. And as a batting group, you need, we, we didn't really adapt to that. When we weren't quite hitting the ball well, I think um, we needed to sort of take our medicine a little bit, make sure we, we turn the strike over and get up and down the wicket a little bit. And um, I, I think we learnt that yesterday. Um, I was going to ask something similar to, to Dean, but I, I, I just asked about Ben, if I may, um, uh, Matthew. Um, Obviously, he's such a key player. He hasn't played that much T20 cricket, and you've got him in at four to try and make the most of him. But is it working? Uh, well, once again, it, I think he's an incredible player for our team. I think he's a 
He's a, a real leader in our group as well, apart from the official leaders. Uh, I thought his bowling has, you know, has been a real bonus for us. I think a lot of people probably underestimate his bowling coming in this tournament. Um, and he's been key for us. I think he's bowled some big overs, particularly in the power play. With the bat, he hasn't come off yet, but I, you know, his career would suggest that at some point someone's going to pay a price, and you know, hopefully that's Australia in, in a day's time. Um, World-class player, T20, you, you miss a lot, um, but you need match winners, of which he's won. But, but you do think there might be a rejigging of the batting order? No, not likely, no. no. We, I, I think we've played really solid cricket for the last month. We've had a bad day yesterday. Um, we, we're not going to throw the baby out with the bath order. So, so unchanged means unchanged, probably, then? We'll have a discussion today. Joss and I will catch up today. But, um, yeah, obviously, back-to-back -back games, we'll have to look at how the bowlers pull up. Uh, we've got a, a session this morning. Um, certainly, yeah, we'll, it's just business as usual, as we would. We'll go through the session, see who's pulled up well, um, and, and make changes. But very unlikely to, to change the structure of the team. There might be a, a change here or two, depending on how the bowlers are pulled up. Hey, um, how will Friday be for you as an Australian and now you've got to beat them to to knock to keep yourselves in a World Cup, which will then potentially knock them out? Yeah, no, no need for any motivation for me. I, I mean, I, I've got a lot of friends in that group, both in the playing group and the staff group, but as, as you're finding cricket, you, you, you love the one you're with and um, I love being part of this group. It's, it's very special to me. We've, I think in the short time I've been there, I've, I've, I've got a lot of you know, really strong allies within our, our playing group and our support group. Um, we're incredibly motivated and, and yesterday only adds that motivation. I think it's, um, it's put us in a spot that we didn't really want to be in, but it, it's a good spot to be in. If the weather holds, I think it's going to be a great great game of cricket. Two very good teams going head-to-head -head with a lot on the line. So uh, it's, it's what you play for. It's World Cups and you know, it's uh, tournament play, which is cutthroat. Um, not always the best team wins, um, but hopefully we put ourselves in a position to, to get over the top of Australia. And what do you think of them? They've obviously got their own issues. They lost one game. Aaron Finch doesn't look in the best of form. I think it's fair. he'd probably admit. Um what have you made of them? What do you think about Finch's form? I, I don't really comment on other, other teams' players too often, but uh, what I would say is you don't win World Cups at the start and, and you often lose a game early and sometimes for some teams that's actually quite liberating and, and frees them up to play with more of an aggressive mindset. So I think both teams know what they need to do. Um, two highly skilled teams going head-to-head -head, um, and it will be small margins. Whoever wins those, those little key moments... Um, yeah, we'll progress in the tournament and there's a lot on the line. There's no, there's no hiding from that fact, but it's, um, it's exciting. I think everyone wants to see it. Australia v England, MCG, um, it's going to be an exciting game. What's the um, <clears throat> Hi, Matthew. Um, I guess at this level, the battle is more kind of mental than, than technical. A defeat like yesterday, it can be quite confidence-denting. What do you say to the players ahead of tomorrow night just to make sure they're right mentally to take on Australia? Yeah, I think most of that was done last night. I think we, um, you know, we spoke really well about the game. Um, we knew we, we didn't play at, at our best level. I think we were timid, and that's something that hasn't been part of the team for the last six or seven weeks. Um, and the biggest thing we need to do is bounce back really quickly. We've got a lot on the line to play for now. I think, um, yeah, Ireland had a bit of a free hit against us last night. Rain reduced matched. Um, they come out and played with a really free spirit. Uh, and that's what we need to do from here on in. When we're, when we're put in situations where there's a decision to be made, we, we want to take the aggressive option. Um, and we probably didn't do that last night, and we've, we've got to be honest with that. But it's one game. Um, and good teams bounce back really quickly. And it couldn't come at a better time. You know, quick turnaround. We don't have to travel. We've got a day to lick our wounds and get back and, and play that cricket that we've been playing for the last six or seven weeks. Do you, do you get the sense that within the group there is the confidence still and the belief that they, they can win this tournament? Uh, absolutely, I do. Yeah, I, I think that... Um, yeah, we were hurting last night. There's no, there's no hiding away from that. It was a, it was a disappointing loss for us. Um, but... You know, you, you very rarely go through these tournaments undefeated. We've dropped a game. We need to play, you know, the cricket that we're capable of, and um, we've we've got a short turnaround. So, I, I, th I expect us to bounce back really well. I, I thought every level last night we were just down in the field. We're down a bit with the ball. We're down, 
and clearly with the batting, we, we just didn't have that other gear. So, um, yeah, just got to bounce, got to bounce back. Uh, Ireland seemed to read the conditions, I'm over here. Uh, Ireland seemed to read the conditions uh, a bit better last night. Was that a, a failure of analysis from the England dressing room or a failure to communicate it? Uh, no, I, th I think, you know, they certainly did. They played the conditions really well. I think uh, maybe they were more suited to that. They, they certainly swung the ball a lot from, from the start and, uh, you know, they got wickets in the power play. I think what this World Cup will show is if you win the power play, you're a long way towards winning the game and, and our power play with bat and ball wasn't exactly what we wanted. So you're always playing from behind the game. Um, so our, our, our challenge for the next game is to get ahead of the game, you know, make sure that if we've got the ball in hand, we take early wickets and put the opposition on the back foot and conversely with the bat, we get off to a, a reasonable start because we bat so deep that we've got a lot of firepower to be able to you know, compete with any team in the world. But um, adaptability is one of those things. It's a really short game, obviously. The shorter the game, the, the probably the, the less control you have over the game and the less um, impact that decision-making and communication does have from the bench. And players themselves have just got to make really quick decisions out there and assess the conditions. So um, I'm probably up to you to judge. What, what did you think? I don't know, it's kind of frustrating to watch. I wonder whether yep. it was frustrating for you to watch. You know, quite experienced players and you're thinking, why are you bowling that length? Yeah, it was. And I think, um, without making excuses, it was quite greasy last night when we bowled particularly and uh, the bowlers did all have trouble with their footing and uh, they, were the, they were the last ones to say that they were struggling but it was quite obvious that they, they were slipping and you've got someone like Mark Wood trying to run in and bowl, you know, 150 k's an hour and he's, he can't really hold his footing. It, it does make it a little bit difficult to execute exactly what you want to do. But they didn't shy away from that either. They, they admitted that after the game. We, we, we got our lengths wrong uh, and, uh, and Ireland made us pay. But on that, there's a uh, ground with a roof two miles away. <laughs> Should we be playing there? Oh, I don't know. It's, a, it's yeah, it's a, a difficult one to answer. I think... Um, Rain, was, rain is going to play a huge part in this World Cup. I think if you, if you study the weather at all, um, that's not, last night is not going to be the only game that's affected like that. So teams just have to adapt. I think you, you know, we, we, knew, we, we had all the aces last night. We won the toss. Uh, we had the advantage of chasing and we just didn't execute. So um, when you get opportunities like that, you can't miss it. Hi, Matthew. Um, winning in Chase this year, I think they've only won three out of 12, uh, whereas the record batting first is really good, which is probably the opposite of what it traditionally has been. Uh, any reasons for those difficulties chasing? No, I can't put my finger on that. A couple of my, my mates have questioned uh, why we do that, but I, I think most teams, it takes out one variable where you, you actually know what, what the pass score is, essentially. Um, but in cricket, if we, we don't really care too much about the toss, to be honest. When Joss and I speak, we we sort of go, yeah, we'd like to do this, but we don't really care. Because the facts are, if you, whatever you do first, you just got to do it well. And as Ireland showed last night, they, they did well in the first innings. And Duckworth-Lewis was fair. I thought it was, a, it was fair. So there, there's a bit of a preconceived idea that it, there's an advantage to, to chase when the weather's around. But if you play good cricket, you, you win the games. And they played better than us last night. And in terms of winning and our chasing... Uh, anything you could do differently. I think you've lost a few sort of middling chases, a couple in Pakistan chasing sort of 160-ish and again last night. Anything uh, differently in the approach uh, to those chases? No, I think the only thing we got wrong was, um, you know, and you've you got to be really careful in those chases to don't put all your eggs in the Duckworth-Lewis basket as well. If, we, if we'd got bowled out trying to get ahead of the rate, we would look silly as well, but... Um, I think if that chase had gone the distance, uh, as I said, with the batting that we still had in the shed, uh, we would have found a way. And that, that's one of the things we've spoken a lot about. I think the England team's been re renowned as a highly skilled team for a long time. Um, part of what we're trying to achieve is, in conditions like last night, is to find a way to win. And we didn't quite achieve that last night, but that, that's going to be what we need to do in this World Cup. I think it's going to be a very different World Cup because of the weather that we've already spoken about. And so that adaptability and that ability to make really um, quick decisions on the run is going to be crucial in the next few games. So that, that's where I see the, our great learnings from last night. Three last ones, please. Um, you've spoken about um, how England were off last night and too timid, um, maybe lacked intensity. Mark Wood certainly made that point that 
the team came out there with a, a real, they were flat, a real lack of intensity. Uh, people will wonder, how is that possible at a World Cup where you can be outskilled, you can be outplayed, but surely being up for a game and being on it is a, is a kind of bare minimum. How, how do you explain that as coach? No, not really. Uh, I can't explain it. But, but I, I thought there was, was, rather than being flat, I think there was just a bit of nervousness around last night. I think the weather played a part. I think anyone who's played the game of cricket will understand those emotions that go around when you're not sure whether you're going to play or not, you're not sure whether you're going to start on time. Um, and the mind is quite a strong thing and trying to overcome that is, is difficult. We tried our best to make sure that we were ready and up, up and about, but you could see in the first six overs we, 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 we weren't right where we needed to be and we paid a heavy price. Uh, I think after that six I thought our last back ten, if you broke the game up, was outstanding. We bowled them out after being one for 92 at the tenth over. To bowl them out was an extraordinary effort, really, and players like, you, you talk about adaptability, player like Livingston to come on and bowl the way he bowled in a high-pressure situation, I thought was really good for our group. So there was, there was, it wasn't all doom and gloom. I think there's some really good parts of last night where we showed a lot of resilience under pressure. Um, Ireland came out with a really free spirit and took the game to us. We were slow to react, but we got there in the end and unfortunately the game was stopped short when I think we were, we were starting to wrestle the momentum back. The game against Australia will be won and lost because they've shown that intensity themselves, and, and the way Marcus Stoyan has played against Sri Lanka, you know, showed that real aggression that um, maybe is needed in T20 cricket. Where do you see that balance of of power between Australia and England tomorrow? Um, well, in the games that we played against them, I think obviously we've faced two different attacks, but um, I, I just see it's a great match up. This is this is mouth-watering match-up for, for cricket followers. All the neutrals, I think, will enjoy this game. You've got, I think, two of the you know, top three or four teams in the world going head-to-head. -head. Australia's defending champions at home. I think we, we're starting, apart from last night, starting to play some really good cricket. Um, and and the, the teams match up really well. They, they both got... Australia's got depth in their batting, as we do. Um, got, you know, striking options with the ball. I think Mark Wood's bowling as, as fast as anyone probably in the history of T20. So uh, there's some really good contests within that as well. And I think, um, like I said before, I think the power play is a huge part of this, this game, particularly if there's rain-shortened matches. So if you can start well, um, get the momentum and hold on to it, that's going to be a big part of winning.